Hello everyone. This is a quick introduction to our new weekly scripture portion series launching on February 1st, 2023. This is Rob. And this is Ronit. As you will see shortly, our passion is studying and contemplating on the Word of Yah regularly and consistently. This is why we came up with our 52-week cycle of scriptures reading that is more comprehensive than any other schedule we have encountered thus far. It was born out of our desire to study the Word of Yah as represented in many of the canonized books, Gospels, as well as additional sacred books. Once we started researching the Dead Sea Scrolls, we felt like we finally found a solid source for our study. The richness and vastness of the information presented in these scrolls can easily command a lifetime of studying. So here we are, ready to share this journey of exploration and deepening our connection to Yah and to His only begotten Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, with as many disciples of the world as are interested in joining us. The what here is the chronological readings, weekly readings, of the Torah, the Prophets, and Yeshua's words, the red letter words that we're familiar with. Additionally, the books such as Enoch, Jubilees, Testaments of Patriarchs, and Sacred Manuscripts from the Dead Sea Scrolls collection will also be referenced and shared during the discussion part of each session. And the why. We want to offer the readings to a community of online believers to meet and meditate on his words. We will also see what differences or nuances that may appear in the comparisons of the text side by side. Nevertheless, most importantly is to understand and do the things in faith that are written in the word for his children. And his children are those of us who believe and obey. Joshua 1.8 and the book of this law shall not depart out of your mouth, and you shall meditate on it day and night, and you may know how to do all these things that are written in it. Then shall you prosper and make your ways prosperous, and then shall you be wise. Also in Psalms 1, 1 through 6, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the advice of the wicked, nor does he stand in the way of sinners nor does he sit in the assembly of mockers. Instead, in the law of Yahweh is his delight, and on his law he meditates day and night. And so he is like a tree planted by streams of water that gives its fruit in its season. Its leaf also does not wither. Therefore, all that he does prospers. Not so the wicked. Instead, they are like the chaff, that the wind scatters. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahweh knows the ways of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And we see here the Torah is compared to living waters. We consume water to sustain our bodies. And here we consume on the Torah, and that sustains us spiritually. The Word of Yah inspires our prayers and it also informs our prayers. The When Based on our research, we decided to adhere to the calendar given to Enoch, which was then passed to the Aaronic priesthood. This calendar was also confirmed in the Book of Jubilees and in the Dead Sea. The authors, keepers of the scrolls, represented themselves as the sons of Zadok and their followers. They differed from most Jews of their day who were Hellenized and followed the lunar calendar decreed by the Greek Empire. They saw the measurement of time as sacred. For them, the astronomical bodies by which time was measured had been created by Yahweh, and consequently its measurement was sacred, a sacred priestly task. Adherence to a particular calendar is the thread that runs through hundreds of the DSS. More than any other single element, the calendar binds these works together. It is the calendar that makes the scrolls a collection. The calendar of the scrolls proposed a 364-day solar year. 
Nowadays, this ancient calendar is referred to as the Zadokite or Zadok calendar. More accurately, we believe it should be called the Enochian calendar. So as presented by Enoch, Jubilees, <coughs> DSS, and by Moses himself, our cycle, our yearly cycle, should start in the springtime, pretty much with the vernal equinox. And that's how we are going to run this 52-week cycle. And here is the schedule. As you see, we have the three columns, the Torah portion, the prophets, and Yeshua's portion that we will be reading from. We'll be starting February 1st on week 46. Here are the sources that we'll be referencing. Pause if needed to read further on it. We will be reading from the DSS Bible translated in English. The Bible includes all the fragments from the DSS and where there are gaps in the text, it will default to the Masoretic text. In the handouts, we will view the comparisons of the Hebrew Masoretic text, the LEB Bible version, and the LXX. This is where we can compare the differences between the three. To understand why we selected these manuscripts as our main sources for the weekly scripture portion study, we need to pause and review the evolution of Judaism on a timeline. In more than 4,000 years of historical development, the Jewish people and their religion have displayed a remarkable adaptability and continuity. In their encounter with the great civilizations from ancient Babylonia and Egypt to Western Christendom and modern secular culture, they have assimilated foreign elements, elements and integrated them into their own social and religious systems, thus maintaining an unbroken religious and cultural tradition. Furthermore, each period of Jewish history has left behind it a specific element of a Judaic heritage that continued to influence subsequent development. So that the total Jewish heritage at any time is a combination of all these successive elements. So Biblical Judaism period is between 2100 BC to 331 BC. I personally like to refer to it as Israelism or the Israelite religion period since the word Judaism or Jews did not exist in the Bible. Featuring a conglomerate of nomads, descendants of Jacob, Israel, who conquer and finally settle in their inherited land, joined later by Ger, plural Gerim, translated into English as sojourner or stranger, actually referred to people who joined the Israelites in an informal way by moving physically into their land and adhering to its religion and laws. Today, we might refer to them as converts, but keep in mind until Rabbinic Judaism emerged, there was no formal process of conversion. This period consists of the Primosaic period and the Mosaic period. The Primosaic period mainly characterized by the religion of the patriarchs. The patriarchs are depicted as objects of God's blessing, protection, and providential care. Their response is loyalty and obedience and observance of a system of religious beliefs and practices whose ordinary expression is sacrifice, vow, and prayer at an altar. Circumcision was a distinctive mark of this community. The ultimate destiny of their faith was God's promise of land and a great progeny. The patriarchal religion prepared the way for the later one through its familial basis, its personal call by God, and its response of loyalty and obedience to Him. The Mosaic period mainly lays the foundation for the Israelite temple-centered religion. The proper name of Israel's God, Yahweh, was revealed and interpreted to Moses. The covenant defining Israel's obliga obligations is sealed. Canaan is conquered and settled a period of a united kingdom followed by a bloody period of a divided kingdom. 
the emergence of the literary prophets, and finally the Babylonian exile followed by the restoration and rebuilding of the temple. The book of Malachi, named after the last of the prophets, concludes with an admonition to be mindful of the Torah of Moses. God's displeasure, however, had always been signaled by a break in communication with him. As time passed and messianic hopes remained unfulfilled, the sense of a permanent suspension of normal relations with God took hold and prophecy died out. God, it was believed, would someday be reconciled with his people and a glorious revival of prophecy would then occur. For the present, however, religious vitality expressed itself in dedication to the development of institutions that would make the Torah effective in life. The course of this development is hidden from view by the scarcity of sources from the Persian period, but the community that emerged into the light of history in Hellenistic times had been radically transformed by this momentous quiet process. Sacred texts from this period include the 38 scriptures. The Dead Sea Scrolls include the oldest copies of this text. The Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, as well as, believe it or not, 38 additional books and documents mentioned within some of the 38 scriptures, but completely lost to us. Note that a newer copy of the 38 scriptures together with the Book of Esther were combined into the Masoretic text at around 1008 AD. The Hellenic Judaism period featuring descendants of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, Gerim, and forced Edomite converts, collectively referred to as Yehudim, Judites, or Jews. This period was, took place from 331 BC to 135 AD. The political, social, and religious scenes are dominated by a powerful elite of Hellenized Jews, the Sadducees, Tzadokim, with a fringe minority of scribes and Hasidim, later to be known as Pharisees or Proshim. Hellenism is the term used to express the assimilation, especially by the Jews, of Greek speech, manners, and culture from the 4th century BC through the 1st century of the Common Era. The post-exile separation of Jews from the surrounding culture pursuing Ezra return to Judea was especially difficult to maintain when the victorious campaign of Alexander the Great had linked the East to the West. During the Hellenistic period, the priests were both the wealthiest class and the strongest political group among the Jews of Jerusalem. The wealthiest of the priests were the members of the Onayat family, Aaronic descendants of Zatok, the high priest, who held the hereditary office of high priest until they were replaced by the Hasmoneans. In this period, the religion was still clearly temple-centered. However, the temple functioned as a bank where the wealth of the temple was stored and where private individuals also deposited their money. Opposition to the priest's oppressive rule arose among an urban middle-class group known as the scribe, Sophrim, who based their interpretation of and instruction in the Torah on an oral tradition probably dating back to the time of their return from the Babylonian exile. A special group of scribes known as Hasidim, in English it, it means pietist or the pious ones, noted for uncompromising observance of Mosaic law, joined the Maccabean revolt against the Hellenistic Seleucids to fight for religious freedom and halt the tide of paganism. They had no interest in politics as such, and they later withdrew from the Maccabean cause as soon as they had regained their religious freedom. 
tradition depicts them as so devoted to mosaic law that martyrdom and torture were willingly preferred to the slightest violation of the Shabbat. I personally believe the mysterious Essenes referred to by Josephus are none other than this group. The Greek word Josephus used, Essenoi or Essio, literally means the pious ones. Based on my personal research, I am of the opinion that the members of the community in Qumran, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were found, which guarded and hid the 900 plus scrolls, were none other than the Hasidim, led by a group of Zadokite priests who stayed loyal to the Mosaic law. The Hellenization of the Jews might have gone much farther had not Antiochus Epiphanes, the Greek Hellenistic king who ruled the Seleucid Empire from 175 BC until his death in 164 BC, attempted to substitute pagan worship for Jewish. His outlawing of the Jewish religion culminated in him rededicating the Holy Temple to Zeus on none other than December 25th. By so doing, he brought on the Maccabean Revolt. But Hellenization had, however, entered too deeply into the flesh to be entirely eradicated, and even the Maccabees themselves ended up getting deeply sucked into it. Sacred texts from this period include most of the Apocrypha, Apocalyptic books, Testaments, and Wisdom books, the Greek translation of the Torah, and later the other 33 texts plus additional texts rejected by Rabbinic Judaism, known collectively as the Septuagint Bible or LXX. The whole translation was believed to be completed by the middle of the 2nd century BC and is believed to be based on much earlier Hebrew text. It should be noted here that the oldest current available copy of this Bible is the Codex Vaticanus, dated 325 AD. The Qumran community, as mentioned earlier, lived during this period. The Qumran priest, referred to as the sons of Zadok, managed to secure a treasure cache of sacred texts dating back to Moses and the patriarchs as they were forced out of the temple by the Hellenizing priests. Many of the Dead Sea Scrolls are believed to be copied and some written during this period, between 200 BC and 70 AD. In addition to the 38 scriptures, the scrolls contain copies of the Book of Enoch, the Book of Jubilees, testaments of many of the patriarchs, as well as a collection of previously unknown hymns, prayers, commentaries, arable formulas, and the earliest version of the Ten Commandments. Rabbinic Judaism period 135 AD to 1750 AD, featuring descendants of the Yehudim as well as rabbinical converts collectively referred to as the Jews. The political, social, and religious scenes are dominated by a rabbinic elite, originally known as the scribes or Pharisees, and later known as Tanaim, Amoraim, sages, and rabbis. After the collapse of active Jewish resistance to Roman rule, politically moderate rabbinic elements remained the only cohesive group in Jewish history. With Jerusalem off limits to the Jews, rabbinic ideology and practice, which were not dependent on the temple, priesthood, or political independence for their vitality, provided a viable program for autonomous community life and thus filled the vacuum created by the suppression of all other Jewish leadership. The rabbis were regarded favorably by the Romans as a politically submissive class, 
which with its wide influence over the Jewish masses, could translate the peace imposed by Roman rule into Jewish religious precepts. To the Jews, on the other hand, the rabbinic ideology gave the appearance of continuity to Jewish self-rule and freedom from foreign interference. The rabbinic program replaced sacrifice and pilgrimage to the temple with the study of scripture, prayer, and works of piety, thus eliminating the need for a central sanctuary in Jerusalem and making Judaism a religion capable of practice anywhere. The Mishnah that soon emerged became the primary reference wo work in all rabbinic schools and constituted the core around which the Talmud was later compiled. It does remain the best single introduction to the complex of rabbinic values and practices as they evolved in Roman Palestine. Let me emphasize here that Rabbinic Judaism was greatly influenced by certain elements of Greek thought and therefore may be regarded as somewhat Hellenized too. The rabbis were greatly fascinated with Greek logic and the Mishnah and Talmuds are heavily based on this classic Greek element. Notable books from this period include early works such as Midrash, Mishnah, and Talmuds, as well as later works such as Targums, Tosafot, and various interpre interpretations of the Torah and Prophets, and other famous compositions by major figures such as Rambam and Rashi. The Masoretic text was formalized in this period too, dated 1008 AD. And last, Modern Judaism, lasting from 7, 1750 AD to present, mainly featuring Orthodox Reform and Messianic Jews, characterized by the appearance of those who abandoned, in part or in total, their inherited Jewish faith, but continue to regard themselves and to be regarded by others as Jews. In other words, Judaism becomes an ethnicity rather than a religion in this period. The end of the doctrine of the exile, whereby Jews saw themselves as a people waiting out centuries of great sorrow and distress in foreign lands until the moment of divine redemption marks the beginning of the modern period. Jewish modernity for most scholars is characterized by the end of a passive waiting for the Messiah and the beginning of an active pursuit of personal or national fulfillment on this earth and preferably in one's own lifetime. So in other words, mostly the Jew in this period forsake the belief and the idea of waiting for Messiah. No matter what, modern Jews are still dominated by rabbinic thinking and teachings, but this is a topic for another discussion. And here on the sources, as mentioned before, we'll be showing the differences between the Masoretic text, the LXX, and the DSS. Um, at times, each one of these will disagree with each other, and that's what we're going to be highlighting in these as we read them. For instance, in Deuteronomy 32:43. In the Masoretic text, Sing out praise, O you nations, for his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, inflict revenge upon his adversaries, and appease his land and his people. And we'll see here in the LXX there's some additional or more detailed text here. Rejoice ye heavens with him, and let all the angels of God worship him. Rejoice ye Gentiles and his people, and let all the sons of God strengthen themselves in him. For he will avenge his blood of his sons, and he will render vengeance and recompense justice to his enemies, and will reward them that hate him. And the Lord shall purge the land of his people. So we see here in the DSS, O heavens, together with him, 
and bow down to him all you gods, for he will avenge the blood of his sons, and will render vengeance to his enemies, and will recompense those who hate him, and will atone for the land of his people. So we see the differences here with the angels of God. Those are significant differences. And the DSS scholars are in agreement that the Dead Sea Scrolls agree with the Masoretic texts about 95% of the time. We, as in Rob and Roni, are not clear of the actual rate of agreement between DSS and LXX, and we are interested to determine this through our study series. Each week, regarding the format, each weekly session will consist of the following. An hour of the chronological reading of the Torah, an hour of a reading of the prophets, and about 30 minutes of Yeshua's words, because we'll be reading these and having discussions after each chapter that may be pertinent to that specific chapter. And then afterwards, we'll have an optional session to discuss what we just read. The Old Testament readings will be read from the DSS Bible, with the Masoretic text and the LXX will be referred to during the discussions. New Testament readings will be read from the LEB Bible. A PDF handout for each week's reading, consisting of the Hebrew Masoretic text, English LEB, and the English LXX of the relevant chapters for that week, will be posted on the Discord server. Each weekly session will be broadcasted live and recorded on our Biblical Quest Discord server. Recordings will then be uploaded on our Biblical Quest YouTube channel. To join the Discord server, please first download the app on your smartphone or computer, and then request an invite to join our server via our email at biblicalquests at gmail.com. Thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you.